gospel. I'm your gospel. With me, I have a really amazing woman who carries a really deep urgency for souls to become intimate with, uh, with Jesus. She's willing to travel anywhere for his glory, and that is what we are talking about today. Nia Cerise, good morning. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. Hi, how are you, girl? I'm really, really happy to be on your show today. Yeah. Yes, I'm happy to have you here. Um, because watching what you do is just it's very inspiring. It's it's uh yeah, it's very inspiring. I feel like you live out a version of me that I would love to do, but I do comedy, so <laughs> but it's comedy. your comedy is like part of your ministry, like part of what you do. So I actually I love try, that. Man. I try, but it is it's just very inspiring to see a young woman just go out and be so on fire for God before we get into what you've been doing in Tanzania and where you're going on your journey um I just wanted to ask a few questions about you and 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 advice that you can give to people so a lot of young people I mean you're 25 now which is a really young age Um, I just turned 26 literally just turned 26 oh did you Um, it's okay (laughs) I'm 29 so hey (laughs) yes I try man but it's okay up here it's okay you you won't you know get hit problems until you're about 30 it's okay it's fine (laughs) I have like a year left (laughs) but um a lot of young people I've found um in my case and a lot of people that I've I've spoken to find it uh difficult sometimes to be on fire for God in that way or they're quite hesitant to spread the word of God where did that come from for you? When did you first kind of say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to just go for it and, and run with it. And how did you overcome if you did ever have any hesitancy? It sounds a bit strange. Um, I guess, I don't know how to really like describe this, but literally the day that I actually dedicated my life to Jesus, I remember I was in the kitchen and I said, I, I'm never going to be the same again. And my friends were laughing at me. My friends were laughing. They were like, what is this girl on? Like, it's ridiculous. But honestly, I think that um, God actually just gave me a grace. Like, there was this grace that was given to me to go all out, all in. And I always say this. I'm always like, you know what? When I was in the world, I went hard for the devil. Like, I really, really, really worked hard. Like, you know what I mean? And I was like, so now that I'm in Christ... I actually, I'm going to really go hard for Jesus and not out of works or like this kind of, you know, I've got to pay my dues, but it's just like, it's an enjoyment. There's definitely been setbacks and discouragements and times where it's been really, really difficult, but I genuinely have seen the faithfulness of God that continues to push me forward and not look back. Wow. I guess it is as well, continuously remembering, like you said, the faithfulness of God because sometimes God can do things and then you forget and then you think, ah, well, I mean, I, I, you don't have the passion anymore. Well, when you continuously remember what God has done, it I makes agree. it a lot easier to then say, yeah, yeah but he's done this for me. <laughs> like, yeah. Let me spread that. So um, I like that. I think it's, a, and the decision as well to say, yeah, I'm never going to be the same. It sounds yeah. very dramatic, but it's, it's a decision that you made and it's commendable. Oh. And I also feel like, you know, I had, I, I made sure I had a support system um, and like maybe the listeners here like, oh, but I've tried and things are like a lot of the time, the reason why people don't keep running is because they fall and then they feel so unclean and dirty. They don't feel like they can get back up and God's always, he's your biggest cheerleader. Like he's just saying, go, go. So, yeah. No, I love that. That is a great way to describe God. <laughs> um as a woman as well so there's a lot of people that sometimes think that uh, women preachers are not as impactful as men or they don't um actively listen to some women because they think ah well they're not gonna have to be as, as powerful have you ever came up against that and if you have how have you dealt with it yeah I think um I've definitely dealt with that and um it's really interesting how amazed people are and constantly mention oh she's a powerful woman of God someone I've never like I've never met someone like this before and that that is sad you know um and I think it's really common I think I remember sharing with you on one occasion how somebody came up to me and repented after they heard me preach because they underestimated whether I could be you know used by God to even deliver a word to them and something I even noticed I know we're going to talk about this later but when I was doing my mission trip in Tanzania 
I remember so many women had been discouraged from um, like sharing, opening their mouths and were so encouraged seeing a woman and they were just like, oh, like this is what we needed, you know, because a lot of them do not have that opportunity. And there's a lot of difficulty with kind of even being championed or encouraged by their pastors. Um, so I've had really good people, mentors around me that keep telling me, don't stop speaking. Don't stop speaking because it is very encouraging as a woman um, watching another woman do something that is traditionally held for men um because men preachers were like okay that's it and women were meant to keep silence in the church and you know all these yeah. different things seeing a woman doing it you're like oh no we can do that um yeah. i was just reading to be fair in the bible when um uh it was women that found jesus first and yeah. back then people didn't listen to women but jesus <laughs> made it a point that no women are gonna find me first and you're going to have to listen to these women so things like that um to see women now act that in the 21st century you're going to have to listen to us it's great very inspiring um we're going to move on to because you did touch on tanzania uh we're going to move on to that so i was following the journey on your social media we're going to talk about just how we can follow you on that but tell us about that tell us about how that came about and what you were doing out there so for years i was praying and interceding about missions, reaching people, um, you know, going into like the places that many people don't want to go. A lot of people want a pulpit and a microphone and those things are nice, but genuinely I feel most fulfilled and most purpose, I guess, driven when I am over there in the mud, like literally preaching in the sweltering heat. And I had been interceding because I came across a woman called Heidi Baker. And this woman was honestly so incredible to me she had started an orphanage she had you know reached so many millions of people just because of her one step of obedience I think she bought a one-way ticket looked on a map and said God take me wherever you want me and just literally set up like set out and went and I began to listen to this crazy woman's life and I was like I want to be a crazy woman for Jesus I want to literally run and do whatever he wants to do and you know I'd been doing a lot of outreach and evangelism and I'd been doing um a few ministry meetings and things before I went to the mission field but you know I came across an evangelism school by evangelist Daniel Kalenda who leads up Christ for All Nations which was founded by evangelist Reinhard Bonnke who is the Billy Graham of Africa literally he is a house <laughs> name it is incredible and so they had seen over 80 million souls saved and I was like I want to be trained by these people they were doing a boot camp and I remember I had a dream I saw evangelist Daniel Kalenda on a crusade stage with thousands of people and I was giving him a big hug and then when we opened our embrace we literally saw droves and multitudes of people coming to Christ And so I just thought, you know what, dream or not, I know that there is a great commission that I can see in my Bible and I'm going to apply to this. And there we were, like I I lit in in a pandemic. I trusted in God. I had faith. I was accepted into this school. I went abroad and I was like, God, let's go. Even before we stepped onto the mission field in Africa, I was already preaching on the plane. Literally, we were going out in the streets of America sharing the gospel until we ended up going to uh, Tanzania. And that was the wildest, most incredible experience of my life. I mean, we were literally going out every single day. Sometimes we weren't even eating lunch. We were just going from village to village in the storms, like literally in the rain, like everything. I fell into a swamp. Like we were, yeah, but they call it, they say that we are navy seal evangelist and you know the navy seals in america is like the hardest form of like army training and that's what they want to raise up because they have a vision for like seeing 150 million souls saved cassandra like in 10 years and i want to be part of that vision so we literally like last year when i was um doing all of this we saw as a group as a team working together everyone together um over 725,000 souls come to Jesus and it was unbelievable the harvest was so plentiful it's like honestly sometimes I'd sit back 
and I would be so shocked because I would see grown men weeping as the gospel was preached, literally crying their eyes out as, you know, the call to repentance was given. I saw, you know, I would, I would do anything. Like we would stand sometimes, we'd stand on these gospel trucks that we had and we would be preaching our hearts out. Like it was really incredible. I mean, we saw incredible testimonies and this one has marked me forever where Muslim mothers who had received miracles, their children had, you know, gotten back their sight they were bringing me their children and they were saying to me, we once followed another God, but now we follow Christ. And I do not want my child to have a name after that God anymore. Mm. I want you to give them a Christian name. Please help me to rename my child. I was renaming children, Muslim children, Christian names with their parents, you know, consent and encouragement, of course. And they were saying, please help me, give me a name for my son. And I couldn't actually believe that God had invited me to be in, like part of that, that journey. It was, it was, I'm speechless even as I'm sharing it, like this testimony, like it was crazy. I mean, Sorry, I'm going on a bit long. <laughs> no, please continue. It's, it's great to hear because I think when you are in your own little world sometimes and you're not out there evangelizing in these different countries, you can sometimes think that maybe this just isn't happening. Maybe people don't want mm. God as much as what they may have wanted at some point in, in life. And sometimes you you just don't think that people are really hungering for it. But you mm. saying this shows that actually, no, the world really does need Jesus, still need Jesus however many years after he died 2000 years after he died people are still needing him the same as what they did way back then so it's it's really encouraging to hear to know that there is still so much work to do um in the fields I was going to ask you about more testimonies because I was going to say what is one of the most miraculous and shocking things that you experienced whilst you were out there but that in in itself (laughs) is a very miraculous thing in itself because as we know two religions islam and christianity they they butt heads on on who jesus is so the fact that people are coming to say no i i yeah i was maybe bought up in that i don't want to be that can i be this that's incredible it, it was crazy because you know and I'm, i actually want to point out that prayer was so so necessary in this process we were praying i had intercessors back home because the enemy didn't like what we were doing. My goodness, like we were crying out for God to move the heavens. And I'm telling you, there were villages that we went into, right, where people were weeping when we had preached the gospel to them. And they testified and said to us, I saw you come here before you came. Mm -hmm. I had dreams that God was sending a woman to come and to transform and impact the land we had testimonies cassandra of women of god from the region who weren't initially allowed to evangelize because islam had become so dominant in that region and there was so much persecution on the christians that they had said women can't preach because the muslims will not receive from them it wasn't even on a biblical principle but when we came in because i had the opportunity to actually do my own crusades within tanzania with thousands of people which was life changing when we came in the crusade didn't just offer people the opportunity to come to salvation. The crusade brought churches together because we're working with all of the pastors and all of the people in the region. And so we saw that there was a renewal of the mind, women being empowered and weeping because now their pastors are saying, we want to commission you to go out and spread the gospel. And Mm. I was like, what? Like, oh my goodness. Like none of this could have been accomplished or done without you know intercession and prayer I believe that the spirit of God was moving on people and and empowering these women and and sharing and like there was a wild testimony of this one woman who was also a Muslim and she was actually going to the mosque on her daily mosque visit to fast and pray we were preaching on a gospel truck 
um, worshipping and also praying for prayers for healing. Now, this woman said as she was on the way to the mosque, she heard the music that we were playing, turned and changed her direction and came towards the van. As they were declaring and praying for the people, she began weeping and crying. I've even got footage of this. She's crying her eyes out. And as they commanded every demonic force to leave people's lives, this woman flew back onto the ground, began to manifest demons. We came and helped her up and took her behind the truck privately, casted the devil out of her. This woman now confessed Jesus as Lord and removed her headscarf, said that she no longer was going to follow the religion that she was following and came and testified on the stage that Jesus is Lord. And I'm telling you, when she came up and did that testimony, we did another altar call. People were flocking because we're here doing it like in the middle of a car park. We're here stopping our gospel truck, preaching in a marketplace. So when we literally give another altar call, people are leaving their stalls, running to the altar to receive Christ in the middle of a car park. And that was just like, oh my gosh, the gospel is ready to be preached anytime, anywhere. And I was just like, all you can do is cry and just be like, Jesus, what is going on? That is absolutely amazing. It gave me goosebumps as you were saying it, like, because it's just seeing, I mean, I know a lot of people that are in the religion of Islam and they have been since they were born. And it is something that I understand if you are born into it and it's difficult to to renounce that sometimes and to say no I'm going to follow this other thing so the fact that Jesus can do that with people that he can give people that bravery and that boldness and he just changes lives just like that so quickly there was no thought there was no nothing she just said yep I'm gonna just turn my path and come to you (laughs) that's incredible that is so inspiring to hear because it just really shows that there's still there are still people that need Jesus 100% like oh my gosh I think I was even surprised at how much people wanted Jesus. Like, and that sounds crazy because I think when we live in the West, right, we just see like people are very, very like closed, right? But I remember um, all of my team left and I actually stayed behind. I rented actually a a very modest house in Tanzania, like Cassandra. I literally was living off some firewood. It was winter. (laughs) I had a wood chopper who'd come help me chop some wood. And like, but I knew I was on assignment. I knew that God would keep me safe. And I, and I, and I stayed there and every day I would go out and preach the gospel. And every day I was shocked at how hungry people were to the gospel that they were ready like I would preach in a marketplace and I'm telling you hundreds of people would literally gather around to hear and I was like this actually I've, I've I've never experienced I was like these people are hungry and you know what the hungry get fed and that's what the word tells us and I saw it because when we prayed for healing, when we prayed for miracles, these people were so hungry. It was almost like they were like, you know, the the, the woman with the issue of blood, like, I'm going to get my miracle, you know? And they believed, like, I saw paralyzed arms literally stretch out and be healed. Mm-hmm. Like, old men who had been walking on walking sticks for years, now dancing, literally giving like a little testimony jig jig doing i was like hallelujah like you would just see crazy things happen and i remember one time we prayed for somebody's healing and it, i think it was crazy because we prayed for someone's eyes to be healed right and the man was so shocked i don't like he didn't even realize what had happened to him it was this old man he we prayed for the healing when we prayed and we interceded everything, we finished and then he just had no reaction. And we were like, oh, you know, it's the person that, that I was praying with, they had just kind of like, okay, cool, you know. But I waited behind, I said, with the translator beside me, I spoke to him and I said, um, through the interpreter, I said, have you seen any change in your eyes? And are you, what's going on? Like, have you, any changes? And the man said, yes, I'm healed. I wow. can see. And I was like, wait, 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 what? I was like, wait, what? Like, because the person was so shocked. They had given no, like, they were just like, straight face, 
no like I, and I was like if I never asked that man had you been healed he would have literally never told me I began to test him out how many fingers am I holding up tell me show me could you do this before I was blown away wow. at what God, what God was doing that yeah that was unbelievable Oh, that's amazing. That is such an amazing story. I guess the shark sometimes, if something like that has happened, it would just stun you into <laughs> silence. <laughs> and it's great as well, because I mean, it's complete, mm, some, somewhat of a different issue, but people have different evangelism styles. And I know that recently Mike Todd went viral for his type of evangelism. So it's, it's from your reaction, I can see that maybe he wasn't a fan. <laughs> <laughs> boy but it's great to hear that just the word of god alone without the anything around it can still Come affect on. people in that way because you in this generation we have so many you know people call them performance preachers and that they need all the theatrics and all of this just to get the word of god out but you oh seem god. to be doing it with just what god has given you which is the bible and the holy spirit which is great literally, literally have my bible I had my my speaker, you know, I was working with some of the local missionaries and pastors in the region, right? There were no lights, Cassandra, there are no, there are no nothing like, and this is what I think is really interesting because you've got so many people who are like, we need to create the atmosphere. We need to create the atmosphere. Like, how are you going to create an atmosphere on a crusade field where people are falling into the mud? People are literally manifesting demons whilst you're even preaching a message. Like everyone's hot and screaming, and it's it's wild. Like it's not a traditional atmosphere of yes, we need the presence of like you know the quiet. No, like you're genuinely not going to find that. You just believe and see by faith. And I think Jesus more all that like he was traveling through the towns there was no pretty beautiful churches or stages that he was on he was literally going and standing on maybe like a hill just to literally preach to thousands and like I think he's my my model you know I want to follow up to him there's nothing wrong with of course like preaching and doing all of that stuff in a church on the stage but let's not rely on that like one step of obedience and I just said you know what I literally was like God just use me I like was like you know what let me connect with some missionaries let's go to some villages let's do some door-to-door -door knocking I was like God surprised me we literally knocked on doors and we were sharing the gospel throughout the neighborhood and I'd say something about being in Africa is they are such a especially when I was in Tanzania their hearts, who they are. Um, Africans are very much about community. Westerners are very much about individuality. And so when people come to your house, they are so kind and hospitable, willing to listen and to learn. Over here, it's a bit different. We're very much, leave me alone. I'm gonna focus on my life. And we're very stress oriented. Over there, their hearts are so open and they're humble and ready to host people and just say, I want to listen to your story and you kind of exchange both. And I think that's very, very special. And I know God's hand is upon that continent. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, I've got so many friends from different parts of Africa and the community and the heart that they have for God is just something that I haven't seen here in the UK. Um, yeah I think you are completely right on that um speaking of hearts for God so you are going to Pakistan whoop, whoop. which is amazing um and currently I think there's a two percent population of Christians there yeah it's like I think it, it ranges they say either from 1.2 to two percent so yeah it's really it's really low it's really low so why did you choose there of all places was that just something that God told you or did you just think you know what let me look at the places that have the least Christians and gold there um I've actually had a real heart for the continent of Africa and also Asia for many years so India and Pakistan are two countries that have really been on my heart because I really desire to go into persecuted nations you know when I went to train at Evangelist Daniel Kalender's mission school his evangelism school sorry they actually asked us are you ready to die they asked us are you ready to die and you actually have to sign you have to sign and actually like commit to being like you're willing to you're willing to go all out for this lose your life for this um and for me like 
I am 100% like burning to see Muslims and individuals from that nation rise for Christ. I believe that one day we're going to look at Pakistan and they're going to say, do you remember? Do you remember this nation that used to worship idols? (laughs) <laughs> this nation is now a Christian nation. And I think this is something that is so huge, you know, to actually believe that God can sweep and wash that nation, that continent in the blood of Jesus. They need it more than ever. And I've just literally come to God, just like Isaiah said, here I am, Lord, send me. I'm literally saying, God, send me, use me. So we want to plan a four day um gospel crusade we want we're praying for tens of thousands of people to flock and come to Jesus Christ and yeah we're literally running with it and we are praying and expecting God to move and it's crazy because you know I do not hear many people going to places like Pakistan I don't there there is definitely danger involved there is high stakes but for me I know that this is something God is leading me to do so um yeah that is my burden is for that nation and I move with that I know that God is saying reach my people touch them you know that's incredible I'm very excited to to follow on the journey man I'm very excited to be inspired again like I was inspired when you was in Tanzania if someone listening in right now is is listening to you and thinking man I want to I want to do what she does how would you say to someone to just get started so you said that you went to an evangelism school how would you say to someone listening in that has that fire and they don't know where to put it what would you say for them to do yeah I would definitely say you know it's so important that you take that step and you if God is leading you to go to a a mission school an evangelism school or whatever like step out and do it like step out and do it I mean for me it began with me stepping out and starting a YouTube channel that was how God literally began my ministry journey um and as time went on you know I just when God brought the opportunities I'd seize them and now um you know I'm, we're gonna see these wonderful testimonies and I believe that God is opening those doors simply through a step of obedience. That is my answer. Take that step of obedience. Like God can use you. Um, so a hundred percent, just run with it and do what he tells you to do. Yes. Exciting. I'm, I'm looking forward to some testimonies coming in and saying, yes, I had this interview and I'm going, <laughs> I'm ready. Um, so if we want to follow along your journey and we, we, we want to find you on social media, where can we do that? Yes, so you can follow me on Instagram, uh, Nia Cerise, N-I-A-C-E-R-I-S-E. You can also contact me at crowninfaith at gmail.com. Um, so follow the journey if you're interested in maybe even supporting this mission please get in contact with me there are many ways that you can support through prayer um financially um go onto these pages and it will direct you to many things such as you know donation pages and that i would actually encourage you you know if you want to um encourage this god brief vision why not just partner let's do this and let's see soul saved you may not be able to kind of be with me but you know we can run it together so absolutely yeah. um and i know that you have a gofundme as well can you give us more details about that and and where we can find it yes yeah, so the gofundme that i have is called help the gospel reach pakistan um so just type that in <laughs> to gofundme and you should find that you can also support me by um going onto my instagram as i said and i've got a link tree and it will give you every single way in which you can join i really need prayers and that's one thing i would really say um you know even if you can't financially give which is a blessing please just remember me in your prayers just you know that girl that i heard on cassandra's <laughs> radio station lord use her <laughs> amen <laughs> Amen. Um, Nia Cerise, it's been an absolute pleasure. You are a true breath of fresh air um, to the world. <laughs> I can say that. To the actual world. Whenever I speak to you, I just feel very inspired to, uh, to you know, do more. So thank you for that. And I'm sure a lot of other people will feel that as well. Premier Gospel. Premier Gospel.